What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back, or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the matrix, scoping out the crypto oceans. If you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, today we're exploring something that could seriously shake up the entire crypto ocean. Casper's next level approach to layer 2 scaling with ZK rollups. Now, whether you're technical or not, keep in mind that Casper is building towards the future, aka the layer 1 or crypto end game. I believe that once all of these things are uh, implemented and in place and proven themselves, Casper will actually be the only layer one you actually need. It could be spacious enough and performant enough and cheap enough to support all of the utility you need to hold all of the layer twos you could ever dream about putting on a network. And when I say development crypto crew, I mean revolution. Casper isn't just launching smart contracts on the Casper network. Casper is at the cusp of the largest migration of D apps from Ethereum to Casper thanks to Casplex. Stay tuned, crypto crew. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Crypto crew, personally, I love Tangem because in my opinion, it is the best cold storage out there. Allows for self-custody. It's plug and play, easy to use. Use. So if you wish to order your tangent wallet today, you can get 10% off using code CRYPTOCREW. Check out the link in the description box below. Thanks so much for your consideration and support in advance. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. I really think the technology behind CASPA is unique and is going to work in a cash-based system. Crypto crew, you've probably heard the buzzwords, zero knowledge or ZK proofs, roll-ups, scalability walls, and whatnot. But what happens when you take cutting-edge ZK roll up tech and try to layer it on top of a blockchain that is already blazing fast and fundamentally different from anything else out there. That's exactly what Casper is doing, knowing that it actually is not a blockchain, but a block DAG. And the implications are huge, not just for speed, but for what's actually possible on chain. Today, uh, we're getting into something Pretty exciting, potentially game changing for, you know, decentralized infrastructure. Yeah, definitely. We're looking at ZK rollups and how they might work with Caspa's block DAG. It sounds technical and it is, but the implications are huge. Exactly. It's not just like slapping another L2 onto an L1. The real question people are asking is why this specific mix, proof of work security, ZK scaling, and this super fast parallel block DAG, why that might be a completely new kind of setup. Okay, right. So let's start with the basics, the problem everyone runs into, yeah. the scalability wall. If you've built anything or even just used apps, you know this headache. Oh, yeah. It's the classic trade-off, right? You've got Bitcoin, super secure, decentralized, fantastic. But transaction speed, it feels kind of like old school dial-up internet now. Uh, yeah, fair point. Then you got the account model chains, Ethereum being the big one, huge innovation, smart contracts, DeFi, NFTs, all that. Massive. But then peak demand hits and suddenly you're facing insane gas fees. The network grinds almost to a halt. It hits its own wall. And that's where ZK Rolex really came into their own right mm -hmm. for those account-based systems. Precisely. The concept itself is, well, pretty clever. You take maybe thousands of transactions off chain on layer two, you process them, bundle them up. And then generate one single tiny cryptographic proof, the zero knowledge proof. Exactly, a proof that says, yep, all these thousands of transactions happened and they're all valid according to the rules. So the main chain, the L1, doesn't have to deal with every single one, it just checks that one proof. Mm much faster, much cheaper. Right, it became you know, the way forward for scaling in that world, a really effective solution for that specific context. But here's the crucial thing the research points out, and this is key for today. That whole ZK roll-up approach, it kind of assumes the L1 underneath is, well, slow and sequential, like Bitcoin or Ethereum before the merge. It relies on that neat single file line of blocks to figure out the state changes and build its proofs correctly. It needs that predictable order. Uh huh. And Caspa just isn't built like that at all. Not even close. Caspa's layer one is fundamentally different. Forget the single lane road analogy for traditional blockchains. Right, where every block follows the one before, causing traffic jams. Caspa's block DAG is more like a, I don't know, a multi-lane superhighway. It doesn't force blocks into one line. It processes multiple blocks at the same time in parallel. Weaving them together into this directed acyclic graph structure. Exactly. And that's why it's so fast. We're talking multiple blocks per second. Confirmations happen almost instantly right there on layer one. And another critical piece, sometimes missed, is that Caspa uses the UTXO model, like Bitcoin. Right. 
which, if you're developing, means transactions are sort of simpler. They're just transfers of value, stateless units. Which makes them perfect for processing in parallel, doesn't it? Absolutely. You don't have the same kind of complex shared state issues between unrelated transactions that can cause bottlenecks on account-based chains. Mm. UTXOs and the block DAG are a really good match. Okay, so that brings us to the big question the researchers are tackling. What happens when you take a cutting-edge scaling tech like ZK rollups, designed for those slower sequential L1s, Mm -hmm. and you try to put it on top of an L1 that's already incredibly fast and parallel? Does that even work? Yeah, great question. Because it's not just plug and play. You can't easily take an Ethereum-style ZK rollup, which is all about tracking ordered account uh, state changes right. and just drop it onto a parallel UTXO system like Caspa. Hmm. The underlying ways they work are just too different. How do ZK rollups get that clear ordered history they need from a block DAG where things are happening all at once, potentially out of simple sequence? Okay, so this is where the really innovative thinking comes in. The solution being explored isn't a direct port. It's more of a, uh, a blend. It rethinks the job of the L1 and the L2. Okay. The L2 rollup still handles the complex stuff, the computation, the state management that dApps need. All that programmability lives there. But the Caspa L1, its role changes mm. because it's already so fast. Exactly. It's not just the slow final court of appeal like in other systems. It becomes this ultra fast layer for data availability and crucially for final settlement. So his main job for the rollup is just verifying those ZK proofs from the L2 operators. Pretty much. But because the L1 itself is so quick that verification happens with near instant finality, there's yeah. hardly any delay. Ah, okay, I see. So the rollup isn't being used to escape a slow, congested L1. Right. That's the key insight. You're using the rollup to add complex programmability on top of an already super fast L1 engine. You get the benefits of both without inheriting the usual bottlenecks. It flips the traditional L1, L2 relationship on its head because of the L1 speed. That is a different way of thinking about it. And for you, the listener, especially if you're a developer, this is where things could get really interesting. Definitely. First off, the potential throughput. Just imagine you combine the parallel processing of the block deck L1 with the batching efficiency of ZK rollups on L2. The theoretical numbers are huge. Like truly massive scale. Potentially, yeah. We're talking about enabling types of applications that just aren't feasible right now on most chains. Like what? Give us some examples. Think about complex on-chain games needing thousands, maybe tens of thousands of actions confirmed every second, or decentralized social media platforms that could actually handle the kind of volume and speed people expect. Wow, okay. What else? Second big thing, you get that rock-solid proof-of-work security from the Caspa L1, but you can build your complex apps in a more flexible, possibly cheaper L2 environment. So kind of the best of both worlds. Security and flexibility. That's the goal, yeah. Decentralized security anchoring a high-performance execution layer. And third, you mentioned a new design space. Right. It's not just about doing existing things faster. This architecture might unlock totally new possibilities. The research mentions ideas like proof stitching. Proof stitching. Yeah, basically finding ways to allow complex atomic interactions between different applications running on separate rollups, but settled almost instantly together on the fast L1 base. Things super fast, cross-protocol DeFi trades, or maybe instant transfers of assets between different games built on this stack. Okay, that sounds powerful. Hmm. So stepping back, this isn't just another L2 project. No, I think it's more fundamental. It's rethinking how L1 and L2 can work together when the L1 itself is parallel and extremely fast. It could be something greater than the sum of its parts. So for you listening, the takeaway is that the future of scaling might not just be about making existing roads wider. It might be about building these fundamentally different multi-lane highways. Exactly. But as we've hinted, making this work involves solving some really tricky technical problems. It's not simple. Right. Like, how do you actually verify proofs about state changes using a UTXO model that doesn't really have state in the same way? Or what kind of new instructions, new opcodes might the Caspa L1 need to efficiently check these ZK proofs coming from a different kind of system? And how do you securely anchor the state commitments from the L2 onto the block DAG structure itself, which isn't just a simple chain? Yeah, these are the deep engineering challenges. They're right at the cutting edge. And exploring the proposed answers to those specific questions, well, that feels like the next real deep dive. Absolutely. And if you're curious right now and want to get ahead, the place to go is research.mechacase.pa. 
The original papers are there, lots of detail. Definitely check that out if you want to dig deeper immediately. For us, we'll be tackling those specific technical how-tos in our very next deep dive. Looking forward to it. So make sure you follow along, you won't want to miss it. As you can see, Crypto Crew, this isn't just another scaling solution. It's a complete rethink of how blockchains can work together, combining lightning fast parallel processing with the security and flexibility developers crave. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. We love hearing from you. What are you most excited about in terms of the developments that are happening on the Casper network? What other cryptocurrency should you buy? What's the next Bitcoin? Well, this is not financial advice, just my conviction that I share with conviction, but I personally believe we are early in Caspa. The 2025 bull run hasn't got to the next phase just yet at the making of this recording, and as long as that is delayed, it favors the Caspa dev team, which can continue to work on the developments, I believe, will catapult Caspa into the upper echelons of this crypto ocean. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.